Hello students. In this lesson, we're going to calculate this integral here, um, but we're going to use Riemann sums to do so. And this will be a right endpoint approximation. Um, that may not be evident to you, you know, at first glance by looking at this, but it turns out that it is. And I'll show you the picture here in a moment. So let's uh, just go ahead and get into it, proceed with the calculation. All right, so this uh, parabola here, this, you know, dip below the axis. So here's just a rough sketch, right? So, um, you know, when you plug in zero, you get minus six, and then, you know, gets above the axes. Uh, maybe, actually, probably it probably stays below the axes. But, yeah, if I plug in uh, three, um, three squared divided by three. So, yeah, it's always below the axes. So we expect the answer to be negative, okay? Um, that's irrelevant. This is just kind of a cartoon picture here. Um, so a right endpoint approximation, uh, you normally you start with, you know, i is zero, and you get something, you know, like a is equal to x is zero, right? And then what you do, remember, is that you um, compute the width of the rectangle, and there are uniform widths of the rectangle, and that is the left endpoint minus the right endpoint divided by the number of rectangles. And that gives you delta x. So then x1 is equal to x0 plus delta x x2 is x0, or a, plus 2 times delta x. There are two delta x's there, so it'll be 2 delta x. So in general, x3 would be a plus 3 delta x. And in general, xi is equal to a plus i delta x. So you can see the matchup, right? That's a 1, that's a 2, and if it was x3, that'd be a 3, and so on and so forth. So we're going to use these two pieces of information to get us the width of this uh, rectangle and the height of this rectangle so that we can get the area of the rectangle. And then once we get the area of the rectangle, we're going to sum them all up. So the area of this rectangle is delta x times the height. The height is given by the function. So we have to know the delta x, and we have to know the xi, so we plug it into this function here. This is the f of x. All right, let's keep going. So I'm just going to summarize that. So we have delta x is the left endpoint minus the right endpoint, 3 minus 0 divided by the number of sub number of rectangles. So it's 3 divided by n. And in xi, um, we're starting at the left end point. So that's a is 0 plus i delta x. And that and delta x is 3 over n. So it's going to be 0 plus i 3 over n. So that's i times 3 over n. So in summary, xi is i 3 over n. Delta x is 3 over n. So now let's take this xi. Let's plug it into the function. And then let's multiply that function by delta x to get the area of the rectangle. Then we're going to sum them all up. So the, each rectangle has this area, f of x i times delta x, right? Delta x times f of x i gives us the height of the rectangle. The height of the rectangle is determined by the point on the curve. If I plug x i into the, uh, the function, so this should be a squared, then um, I will get the height, and then I multiply that by delta x. All right, so let's keep moving. So just to summarize here, so the rectangle area is one-third xi squared minus 6, and then that's delta x. So now let's remember xi is equal to i3 over n, so I plug i3 over n in for xi, and remember that's being squared, and then I'm going to multiply by delta x, which is 3 over n. So this is the area of each rectangle. Now we're just going to do some arithmetic here, right? So if I square everything, um, I will get... Uh, if I square the 3, I get a 9. If I square the n, I get an n squared. If I square the i, I get an i squared. And then the 1 thirds parked out in front, so 3 goes into 9 three times. And so I have 3 over n squared i squared. Minus 6, that hasn't changed, nothing impacting that. And then I'm multiplying all that by 3 over n. Now I'm going to distribute to 3 over n. When I do, I get 3 times 3 is 9. n squared times n is n cubed, and the i squared stays the same. Then I have a 6 times 3 is 18, 18 over n. Now I'm going to write the 18 over n as 18 over n times 1 because I'm going to factor some stuff out in a moment. So this is the area of each rectangle. Now the sum of the rectangles will give me the area approximation, uh, the approximation of the area under the curve. So I'm going to use my summation symbol. i is going from 1 to n and uh, I'm going to plug this in for the the sum of each uh, of all the rectangles. 
And now I'm going to um, use linearity. So you know, this is essentially the distributive property, right? If I'm adding up all the terms, then this 9 over n cubed doesn't change because the thing that's changing is the i is what's increasing and decreasing. So this factors out. I can just factor this out of the sum, and I'll have 9 over n cubed times the sum of the i squares minus, and then I, again, I can factor the 18 over n out, and I'm just summing um, a bunch of 1s n times. Now, the formula for the sum of i squared from 1 to n is n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus n over 6. And then this is parked out in front from this here. If I sum up all the, uh, if I sum up a bunch of 1s from i to n, I'm just going to have n of them. So that's going to be an n. And this is the sum of all the rectangles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute the n cubed into this term. So n cubed over n cubed is 1. n cubed over uh, sorry, n squared over n cubed is uh, going to put an n in the denominator, and an n over n cubed is going to put an n squared in the denominator, and then the n's are going to cancel out here. So this term simplifies to 9 divided by 3 is 3, 9 halves, 9 divided by 6 is 3 halves, and then, of course, we have the n and the n squared, and then I just have an 18. And now, that's the rn. Now we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, as n goes to infinity, 3 is going to stay the same and 18 is going to stay the same. There's no n in those terms, so nothing is going to change there. Those are constants. So um, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n and the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. Well, that limit is 0, that limit is 0, and so we just have 3 minus 18, which is minus 15. Okay, let's summarize everything. So we have Rn, remember, it was 3 plus 9 over 2n plus 3 over 2n squared minus 18. Or if you wanted to, you can make that minus 15 plus this and that. If you wanted to simplify that, I'm just putting this so that it looks like our previous slide. And then uh, we took the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, these two terms went to 0, and 3 minus 18 is minus 15. So to calculate this area, we get minus 15, and we expected that because... This area lies um, entirely um, beneath the uh, beneath the curve, right? Okay. All right, that's it. Well, good luck.